You can do it, baby. I like it. Bingo! <laughs> Say hello to the camera. Carla, a Canadian couple with two totally different backgrounds, sharing our experience and advice about traveling in Canada. After almost a decade of world travel, we decided to focus on our home country of Canada and see how deep we could go. This started with a 150 day road trip from coast to coast to coast, showcasing some of the best things to do in each province and territory. We thought we'd see it all on that road trip, but we barely scratched the surface. So follow along as we continue to explore the second largest country on Earth. We're back in Crow's Nest Pass, one of our favorite road trips in Alberta as it's only about two hours from Calgary and you get to come down the beautiful Cowboy Trail. And it's actually our first time here in the winter so we're really excited to see what it's all about. But this trip's extra special because we've partnered with Toyota who's given us their brand new 2022 first ever subcompact SUV Corolla Cross which has been a great vehicle so far. It has Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, wireless charging, an optional 9 speaker JBL audio system and more. It's fun to drive because it drives like a car but it has the versatility of an SUV. And right now we just arrived to Goat Mountain Getaway, some beautiful cabins right in the heart of Crow's Nest Pass. Well, it's time for our first activity of the trip. We're gonna be going fat tire biking. We just picked up our bikes from Alpenland, which is located in Blairmore. And we're gonna be actually doing the community trail. So the community trail is a 23 kilometer trail that connects the five communities that make up Crow's Nest Pass. Uh, it's a bit ironic that we have fat tire bikes today because there's not that much snow. Unfortunately, well, or fortunately, you actually get Chinooks here just like in Calgary. So it can be cold one week and warm the next. Today's going to be a high of plus three, which is a pretty warm winter day. But either way, it's going to be a beautiful time to explore the pass. How do you find the biking so far? Oh, it's wonderful because I'm not very good at biking. So having white tires helps a lot. <laughs> That's our cabins. Oh, How's it? Catching my breath. <laughs> How about you? You can do it, baby. Well, I did it, look. Hello, halfway. Yes. I know, it was, everything was getting so tense in my body. Oh. You did it. I'm back on. Well, it looks like we just made it to the parking lot of the Interpretive Center. Probably the hardest part of the day is going up that hill. Wouldn't you agree? Yes! If you really want your legs to burn, come to the Frank Interpretive Center. Oh my goodness. Also, she's not nearly as used to, to biking as me, so... Well, this is Frank Slide, one of the most popular attractions here in Crow's Nest Pass. It's actually the deadliest landslide in Canadian history. We've been here a number of times because it's just such an impressive sight to see. And it's actually happened back in 1903 when a landslide occurred on Turtle Mountain, sending 110 million tons of limestone rock down on the town of Frank, which killed somewhere in between 70 and 90 people and basically annihilated the entire town. The 
open up so hopefully you can still hear me well and right now we're in the drive through the slide section so we've been exploring the crossness pass by bike but you can also explore it by car so along the way you're gonna be finding information panels like this one that is gonna tell you more information about the site because the pass is not only known for some of Canada's deadliest disasters, but it's also full of mining history. I'm doing it! I'm recording you with one hand! Even though today it's not very chilly, it's only three degrees, that wind! But anyway, you don't feel it that much once you're biking for a while because you get warm up, but be prepared for the hills because there's a lot of up and downs, especially in Frank's slide. <laughs> East of Frank, you'll find two towns, Bellevue and Hillcrest. And we decided to come to Hillcrest because it's home to Canada's worst mine disaster, which happened on June 19th of 1914. If you make it to the back of the cemetery, that's where you'll actually see the tombstones of the miners. Right now there's actually a lot of snow here, but there's also some, some plaques set up which you can read about some of the, the stories and it's pretty heartbreaking because, uh, you know, it was pretty much the whole community that died that day. And not only that, but a lot of the women lost their entire family, their husbands, their fathers, and even their sons. So pretty, pretty tragic. It's time to ride all the way back to the first or the last town, however you want to see it, which is Coleman. And I'm a little bit afraid because it's quite windy and we <laughs> barely feel our face now, right? It's so windy right now that we cannot, we cannot even bike because <laughs> it's also uphill. <sighs> and we're actually very tired already. <laughs> we don't know if we'll, we'll make it all the way till the end. That's it, no more biking. We're too tired, we're too cold, and the wind is awful. But the good thing is that there's a cherry on top just next door. Well, after a long day outside, it's always great to have a delicious pint of beer and we're pretty happy to learn that there is actually a brewery called The Pass Beer here in Blairmore. So we sat down to the table, we just ordered some pizza and of course we had to try a bunch of beers so we decided to order a flight. Pretty excited to try them. It's all different kinds here. We have a sour, we have a dark stout, we have a red Irish beer. So we're gonna try them all again, Carla, and see if we like the same ones? Yeah, sure. So it's hard for me to pick which one is my favorite because I really like them all. But I'm gonna go with the peach sour. I really like that one. And second, I will go with the whiskey six, which is a stout. And for me, my favorite, of course, is the sour. Oh. And I'm looking forward to trying this pizza. That just came as well. And it's, it's really interesting because it's got a herb ricotta base, a ricotta base, Italian sausage, ham, pepperoni, salami, matza, and parmesan. This is the best kind of pizza. Mm. It's really good. It's kind of different. It's very cheesy. I like it. Almost as cheesy as Carla. Uh -huh. It's yummy. Oh my god. I was looking forward to this moment so much. Like shower, rested, and now eating and enjoying beer. <laughs> Do you think you were going to be playing bingo tonight? No. <laughs> but it is fun. Maybe we can win 3200.
I'm getting so close. We're playing the O game right now. I only need three, which I also only need three for the whole game. But it looks like someone already called in, so let's hope they didn't win. Well, someone won the O game, so now we're playing for the blackout, but the prize is less now. It's only $1,000, but I'll still take it. Bingo! <laughs> I have to see if they want They said they'll let us know. <laughs> All right, thank you. Bye. We won! Only a third. Yeah, but a third of it. So like $335. But still pretty sweet. <laughs> oh my god, this visit is epic! Cheers to the Christmas pass and the bingo! <laughs> Well, we didn't make it to Coleman yesterday, but we're here today, bright and early. Unfortunately, we're not gonna be actually exploring the town on this trip, but if you wanna learn more about Coleman, it is a really historic town. It's really interesting. And you can see it in our other video we did on Crow's Nest Pass in the summer. But we're actually here today because we've heard such good things about the breakfast at Chris's restaurant. Well, so far, so good. There's so many options for breakfast, and someone said that the omelets are pretty good. So we're gonna share a loaded omelet with some French toast. Well, we were right, the breakfast looks huge, so I'm glad we're sharing. Plus, we got an extra piece of French toast, which is also huge. <laughs> Well, it's finally time to go cross-country skiing, so we're here at Allison Chinook area. This is basically the prime area in Crow's Nest Pass for snowshoeing, cross-country skiing, and even fat tire biking. And it looks like there's a lot more snow here, so we're pretty excited to get going. You remember how to put them on? Do you remember how to stop? All right. Uh, Really, maybe kind of like the pizza. Like a pizza. Yeah. I don't remember. We're about to find out anyway. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't know what's the proper way to do it, but he's going, so I guess that's a good thing. <laughs> Well, up until now, we actually haven't known which trail we're on. We thought there was just one, but we just came across this map and there's actually a pretty extensive network of trails here. So we're actually on the mainline trail. We thought we were on the rainbow run. So we're hoping to get all the way to the lake. It looks like we'll hit a blue run. Hopefully it's not too sketchy for us. And then uh, we'll come back on the rainbow run. Well, so far it's been a pretty awesome day. Yeah. Cross country skiing. And uh, we just come up, come up to our first hill, so I'll let Carla go first. <laughs> oh, yeah. Guinea pig. All right. <laughs> All right. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. If you're not back by four, I'll call for help. It's extra challenging trying to hold the GoPro at the same time. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm definitely not a pro at this, but I'm doing my pizza as best I can. <laughs> What can I do? <laughs> oh. <laughs> it no, it's not a good idea to stop with the poles. Say hello to the camera. Hello. Oi. I hope that we're down the hill. Well, that was about the least romantic way of coming down the hill, but we made it. <laughs> we made it without any broken bones. And we're now at Chinook Lake. This is a frozen lake. <gasps> Feels a little bit soft though. Ooh. Almost there. I think so. This is more tiring than cross country skiing. It's so deep and your where shoes go through. Didn't think we'd be walking today. 
Well, we made it to the other side of the lake with wet feet. <laughs> there were some parts where your foot got quite deep. It's not that frozen, it's scary though, but there's no sign, so anyway, we're alive and on the other side. cross-country skiing I think we should do this more often yeah it is actually a pre pretty good exercise and like a really great way to get in the wilderness and enjoy the winter but now we're gonna take off these skis and strap on a different set of skis so we can go do some downhill skiing We're at Powder Keg Ski Area and we're about to do some downhill skiing right in the heart of Blairmore. It's actually probably the latest we've ever started skiing before. It's about 5 p.m. right now, but that's because they actually have night skiing. How was it? That was a nice little run. Have you ever been on a T-bar before? No, <laughs> I'm actually scared about that. Hopefully I don't bail. No, they're fun. You guys must love Carla's reaction to all these little things, <laughs> like a T-bar. They're actually kind of fun. I still prefer a chairlift, but these are still kind of fun. It sure beats walking up the mountain. All right, that T-bar was exciting. My first time alone, <laughs> and I, I didn't bail. But anyway, we made it all the way up here. So we're gonna try to go on the blue, which is the Chinook, all the way down. Oh my god, Matthew, Matthew. You always make me so nervous when you stop so close to me. This is Carla's first jump. <laughs> Oh my god! You it. Yes! I went on the air a little bit. <laughs> How was your first time night skiing? I'm pretty good. We could keep going, it's just I'm getting cramps. <laughs> a lot of exercise today. But yeah, it's quite a fun place to ski at night. I like it. All right, well, that's it. And it was a lot of fun and a great way to end our second night here in Crow's Nest Pass. All right, well, that's it for our time here at Goat Mountain Getaway, but we're not actually going home yet. We're gonna be checking into a different kind of accommodation tonight to stay in one of the most unique cabins we've ever seen. Well, I'm gonna give you the tour of our castle. So here is the main bed. Oh, it feels so cozy, I love it. And then, if you have kids, or more people with you, there's two more beds up here. And look, and a window. <laughs> I guess if you're a very tall guy, maybe you won't fit here. But yeah, I think it's definitely for kids. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's awesome. Yeah, it's very cute. Then over here, there's another space, maybe for another little kid, but if not, maybe just to read. This would be a super cool place as a little kid. And then up here is the tower, the Rapunzel's Tower. It really feels like a dollhouse. Look at the bridge, it's so cute. And even the microwave, it almost looks like a toy. And I'm gonna give you a tour of the outside of the castle. First of all, as you can see, 
I'm super impressed by all the detail of this place. I love this, it's actually not wood, it's plastic, but I guess that's how you make it really look like a castle. And to add to the fairy tale, the fire pit actually has little mushroom stools. And as you go around the back, you have a swing that you can have fun on. And my favorite part, a wood-fired hot tub. So I'm, I'm pretty excited to try that out later, especially today when it's so windy. That's gonna be really nice. But just to let you know, this cabin is definitely on the pricier side. They're a lot more expensive than way, where we were staying before. Plus you actually have to bring everything you need. So they provide basically the blankets for the bed and everything else is up to you. So everything from hand soap, towels, lawn chairs, there's a whole list of stuff that they'll actually email you when you book it and make sure you bring it all. Well, as you can see, it's a pretty unique place to stay and that's not the only cabin they have. They have a variety of other fairy tale style cabins to choose from as well. Yeah, it was very hard to choose which one we wanted to stay at. Yeah, so we're just gonna pretty much enjoy our day here, start a fire, enjoy the hot tub, and just have a great last day of our time here in Crow's Nest Pass. So if you like this video, give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, leave us a comment, and for more on what to do here in Crow's Nest Pass and beyond, visit our website at mustdocanada.com. You gotta be kidding me. We've been looking so forward to these cinnamon buns and it's not only closed today, but it's closed tomorrow. Oh man, this is super disappointing, but there are other places here. So either way, we got to find somewhere to eat because we're starving.